What's good, people? It's your boy Chad, one half of the Realest Podcast ever, and I'm coming to you today with a very special call to action for everybody in TRP Nation. Anybody within the sound of my voice, this message is for you. Y'all know a big part of what we do here at TRPE is to be a resource for the community and to be able to give back and help in any sort of way that we can, whether it's politics, civics, whatever is going on in and around the city of Philadelphia. August 27th through the 29th, I need everybody that's available to show up and come to the Six Man Center, 4250 Wissahickon Avenue, right in the heart of East Falls, to be able to come with us to celebrate these young men and the Philly Powell Association coming together for the Shoot Hoops, Not Guns basketball tournament, powered by Philly Youth Basketball Association and our triple OG, Mr. Fourth District, Curtis Jones Jr. That's right, August 27th through the 29th, Philly Youth Basketball, Mr. K Mr. Fourth District, Curtis Jones Jr., coming together at the Allen Horowitz Six Man Center, 4250 Wissahickon Avenue, to host this basketball tournament. Doors open at 6, Gun games start at 7 p.m., and we're going to be rolling until they're done. So we got games all night Tuesday, all night Wednesday, championship game for the middle school and high schoolers on Thursday. Make sure y'all pull up, man. All we ask for is your support. If you want to sponsor, please reach out to me at official TRPE on Instagram, and I can point you in the right direction. Any other than that, if you want to attend, we don't ask for anything. Just pull up and provide your patronage. TRP Sports, man, we are outside today, not inside. Uh, we are here at the 2024 Daniel E. Rumpf Classic. The Rumpf Cup is that we're, we're now calling it. we, we got to take that and run with that. That's a good one. The Rumpf Cup, and we're here with the, the founder the founder of the uh, Danny Rumpf Tournament, which now has tentacles in all these different leagues, Drew League in L.A. and, you know, New York leagues and stuff like that. And um, I want to, one, commend you for staying the course with this thing. Um, it's been what? First year was 2006? Yeah, year, 19. year 19. So first and foremost, staying the course, and then second – your media operation. Yeah. How did you do it? I mean, I think, uh, well, first, let's say I'm the co-founder, right? Like, it's a, it's a group of us. You know, you're know. proud. He took the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, could be, this, could, this could be a long explanation here. <laughs> no, I think, you know, when we started it, you know, myself, Sharif Hanford, Sharif Bray, Shout out you know, Shout out Sharif Bray. you know, Justin Scott, you know, Brandon Huff, like, all of us came together, like, how do we keep his memory alive, right? So, we all play basketball, playing basketball is easy for us to do and when you know we were 22 at the time it was like that's what we were going to do anyway so right. you know being able to do that together has always been special and that's what makes it special today that's leading into the media team the tentacles are how many volunteers we have how much staff we have right. that come and make this a top tier production as like you know a complete volunteer staff and that's what people get confused by it's like making sure that we're creating opportunities for young people from the media side like right. learning how to be in, inside of an event, being able to put that on a resume and, you know, build your experience. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, how do we do that? You know, shout out to, you know, Brian Mermelstein, you know, being able to really, like, take hold of what the media team looks like and, and build. And I think that's what it's about is going to find more younger people, you know, that are looking for that opportunity in sports. Can I, can I ask you a question real quick? Can you explain who Danny Rump is for sure. people? Because a lot of people don't know. They kind of know the name, they know the tournament, yeah. but they don't know who Danny Rump is in his history. So, so Danny Rumpf was the starting point guard at Western Kentucky right. in 2005. Um, took them to the, the tournament a couple years. You know, he passed away in a Philadelphia rec center, Mallory Playground, from a heart disease called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Mm -hmm. So at the time, there was 15 of some of the best players in Philadelphia playing up there at night. You know, he collapsed. You know, nobody knew what had happened to him. Um, thought he had a seizure. There was no defibrillator in the rec center. Um, there was, you know, at that time, they had these blackouts at the fire department. Mm -hmm. It took 45 minutes for an ambulance to get there. Um, and nobody knew CPR. So, you know, those three things, you know, could've just could have saved his life. So, it, you know, it led to him, you know, unfortunately losing it on Mother's Day um, in 2005. Wow. So it hit, hit the basketball community really hard at mm -hmm. that time. Um, and I think, like, him as a player, like, growing up over there at Mallory with him since, you know, sixth or seventh grade, mm -hmm. you know, I got a chance to, and all of us, to see him really develop into a big-time Division One basketball player. And, you know, we were really proud of him just being a, a, a local neighborhood kid 
you know, to being like, man, like I think he's the best player in Philly. Like it was fun to go watch him play. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember playing against Simon Gratz and how good Gratz was and, you know, how oh, good, yeah. you know, John Allen was when we mm -hmm. played some, some different teams. And then he got a chance, you know, along with some of the other guys to go play AU and travel and, you know, go to Vegas, the big time tournament. Right. And, you know, it was always like, man, like I think he's really got a chance. Right. Uh, so that was when he, you know, passed away. He had one more year of school left. And it was like, man, I can't wait till he turns professional. Um, so that's why this tournament is also, you know, I stopped playing one year because I was like, I'm just not good enough to play. If I play, people are like, oh, I can play Mike's play. Right. <laughs> um, so I was always like, I wanted to keep it as the type of players that I believe and know that he was mm -hmm. um, to allow them to, you know, keep his memory alive. Because I built this um, along with everybody of like, man, how do we make sure that it's something that he would have played in? Right. Now, did you, when you started it, did you see it get into a place of this much attention, NBA players, all of that? I mean, I don't know if I ever saw what it is kind of today, but at the time I was an intern for Ann One, so I liked and loved right. summer basketball. That was more where I was at. You know, Aaron Owens, one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, get, he was stumbling here. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but being able to to see that at firsthand of how to do the events, how it looked, and what everybody else was doing around the country, you know, also helped curate the vision of like I want Philadelphia to have that. I want the city to be proud of something. Right. I want you know when people talk about you know the Drew League, Rucker Park, Dykeman, you know all those great other leagues around the country. It was like I wanted us to have something. Right. Um, and we've had some great history in Philadelphia basketball as a whole. But it, when we started, it was like, let's get people together. But, you know, what people really don't realize is year one, Hakeem Warwick, who was a teammate of Danny Rome, mm -hmm. played for the first 12 years. Right. You know, we've always had NBA players. And mm -hmm. I thought all of our friend group, you know, we brought generations that first year with Michael Jordan from Penn, Antoine Brockington, right. um, Hakeem Hart Sr., mm -hmm. you know, all the guys that were overseas or, or neighborhood guys and Jarrett Kearse and, you know, Face from West Philly was, yep. they won the championship the first My year. God, shout out Face, man. Yeah, so it was, it was a lot, it's always been a lot of really good basketball players. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just the energy has kept building as, you know, we've all kind of grown and, and built relationships. Oh, for sure. Let me ask you something. How, how has the rise, like the realignment of like PIAA, basketball in philly and state of pennsylvania and then like our prep scene and our you know our high schools become like m hotel becoming a powerhouse and stuff like that how has that uh helped feed into like some of the talent showcasing that happens here you know in the first week of august every year with the rump yeah i mean i think like philadelphia is a basketball hub there's there's great mm -hmm. basketball there's there's a bunch of other great leagues in philadelphia inside outside um great high school leagues i think the development of young people you know, it's just making sure that the pipeline is even stronger, right? It, yeah. You know, you know, our whole thing is we've got a couple of youth programs, we've got teams in big tournaments. You know, you know, shout out to Raheem in the chosen league. Yeah. You know, shout out but, Raheem, that's my guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, being able to have all that and everybody complements each other. So as the energy moves forward, it's like the whole summer goes, and it's like people can't wait. So for us, we only let pros play like post college because we want to make sure that like, you know we don't let like. The rules can get a little funny with the Got kids it. in NCAA, you right. know. So we're like, man, we just like to make sure that the kids are safe and you we don't make want to jam up nobody eligibility. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we we try we don't try to mess up your track off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that's our thing is always keeping the kids first, right? right. So so I think that's the, the level that we like to keep everybody. We like to be the the end of like, oh, we can't wait for you guys to turn professionals. Right. Does the does it get stressful at all? Like leading up to it, does it is it a lot like having to go into putting this on for four or five days? Yeah, it's it's super stressful sometimes, and I think you know, but there's a lot of fun in that. There's right. a lot of great people that here help that, that make my life a lot easier. Um, I think everybody of that's a volunteer here, or even all the guys that started it. You know, Sharif's just in charge of one section. Sharif Hanford's in charge of the next section. You know, Justin runs the table. Mm -hmm. Sharif kind of does the merch. The other Sharif runs the team. Yeah. You know, Brandon helps, you know, maintain, like, the whole basketball court area. So, like, now it's, you know, it's stressful for everybody because, right. you know, we try to make sure that we put on a, a good show and all we're right. all having still fun together. Yeah, I, I commend you for even answering the phone during all of this. <laughs> he answers the phone every time I call him. This is amazing to me. Seriously, I commend you for that. Doesn't always happen to everybody, man. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it, really, man. We were just talking with Jermaine about how uh, we all started up top. Like up in the, the the very top, and then we started getting to the middle, and we started getting to the floor. It's just like, are we important at the wrong time? <laughs> All right, cool, 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 cool. Do you have any predictions for this weekend? I mean, our main prediction is 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 everybody's going to have fun, man. Uh, I that's think a you, PR you, answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, media <laughs> training, yeah, yeah. Media training is on a one. Trying to get him real <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think you know the best part about now is that like even yesterday all the games were close games. They they were. Yeah. We were we were literally like like yo this is like great the the, the FOE and uh, eight I was like this is like great basketball yeah. like yeah that was fantastic. And that's the thing is like you never really know you can't predict it like mm -hmm. who knows who's showing up so I think that's the fun part too is like 
one phone call, the whole thing changes, right? Right, so right, right. There's always some special guests that are floating around, you know, but I think the main thing is making sure that anybody comes out to watch all the local guys, regardless of if there's any high-level pros, are going to see great basketball. Like, oh, we've, yeah. we've got about – I think we did the numbers before. We had represented, like, 50 different countries with guys that are playing and where wow. they're going in that course wow. of the year. So, you know, Philly basketball around the world is really strong, and, you know, that's why, like, Salute it's cool to, to it's cool to see the people here get a chance to see those guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yesterday, you, 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 you realized, like, yeah, the talent level is really there. You know, yeah. some of these guys, they're like NBA veterans, NBA champions. There's all kinds of players running in and out of this. So it's dope to see, man. It's definitely a good look for the city. I think that's the thing. Um, it was fun, too, to watch, you know, the one team, you know, develop now. Like, those kids just graduated school, right? right. So just like, you know, Dante Scott from Emotep, right. Hakeem Hart from Villanova. Mm-hmm. You know, we've seen Hakeem Hart since he was a kid. You know, his dad played one of the first rumps. He's the second player to, to I believe, have a, you know, their dad played and he played. So mm-hmm. shows that we're getting a little bit older, but it's, it's a cool kind of, like, tidbit. It's crazy seeing just how there is, like, such a basketball culture here. Because if you're not in it, you might not fully understand it. You yeah. know, because I, I don't play basketball. But when you come to things like this, you realize, because it's like somebody shows them, and they're like, yo, he was the coldest back in the day. Like, I was talking about, what's his name? Uh, oh, J- 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 yeah, like, yeah. yeah, he was the coldest back in the day. Yeah. Then yesterday, it was a young boy that walked through, and they was like, he playing Delaware. And he's like, yo, he's the, like the nicest. And De- like, yeah. I was just like, yeah, it's crazy at how all ages, it's always centered around basketball. But like it, if you part of that culture, you win it. It, it. it even goes deeper. Like Danny's dad, Money, was still, was a phenomenal basketball player. Okay. The president of the Run Foundation, Marcus Owens, Danny's uncle, mm-hmm. top five player at Germantown High School of all time. So, like, the roots run really, really right. deep of, like, right. you know, the, the older guys all the way down to the younger guys. So Yeah. No, for sure. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, I want to talk to y'all about – talk to you, rather, about – how did you build your live streaming platform? I was here yesterday for the He's balance. With the media, yeah, the media the, it's, it's, it, it, blo- it blows me away. Anytime I got somebody that's in front of me that's doing something impressive with media, like I try to steal from them. So I'm asking these questions selfishly, <laughs> but I also want to inform people. But like, I'm, I was here for the balance of you know the first three games left at halftime of the fourth game. I get in my car, I get on Twitter. There's the game. I get on Instagram. I get on Instagram. There's highlights from the first three games that I just watched, Completely and edited. player of the games. Everything, everything edit like it's amazing. But specific to the live streaming part of it, how did you build out the live stream? How did y'all correction build out the live streaming platform? I can't give all the secrets out, man. I give you. The, just, I'll text you the blueprint. <laughs> no, I mean you know. Luckily, it's just understanding what your capabilities are and where yeah. you are. So like this one particular. At a college, they have the cameras already set up to, you know, stream down. So we tapped into some things and then ran a cord. And, you know, we were able to, you know, go outside because we know, you know, we're outside serving food. Jim doesn't want his back inside. So we put a TV outside. So then that way people can still watch it. Right. Um, so we had a thing with Twitter where we were live cutting the, uh, the, the, um, the live stream. But we don't really put the live stream link out there. So right. it's one of those things that we like people to be in the gym. We want yeah. you to come in here. We don't want you to be like, oh, man, I'm not going to go down. I'm going right. to sit, sit, <laughs> sit in the house in the car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think it's, it's also just understanding technology. We've got some really good, you know, people that, that we just ask, and then we push the limits a little bit of, of what they give yeah. us. But community college particularly has been super helpful with, you know, what they offer us with everything in there. They, they have equipment-wise, their Wi-Fi, like how do we run the right. lines. You know, so I think being able to tap into a college facility in a gym makes it a little bit easier. I was also going to ask you, uh, you know, normally you guys are at LaSalle. Right now they're renovating, redoing their gym and their facilities and stuff like that. Um, You're here at CCP. Um, This is a, I think, underutilized and underappreciated venue that we have here in Philly, especially for, you know, for sporting events because, like you said, they have all of that – technology and these inf- this infrastructure that's you know kind of already here that people may not even know what has been maybe the primary differences between being at one versus the other being in LaSalle versus being at CCP and vice versa I think a lot of it is you know I like how CCP allows us to you know build out what I call like a Danny Rump arena mm-hmm. you know able to way the way that we put the signs up they make it super easy mm-hmm. they're, they're accommodating yeah. you know and I think being able to be a little bit of a smaller space makes it more intimate mm-hmm. um, LaSalle was a huge gym you know I think the new gym is going to be beautiful up there yeah. um, but I think you know being able to be in a, a brand new gym which is the same thing as community is you know you got the digital boards we're able to tap into you know partners and sponsors exactly. we've got some videos that are going to fly through there in the next couple of days so you know I think being able to come down here and also give everybody an opportunity to see what community college looks like like 
um, and be able to really be like, man, like we got phenomenal facilities in Philadelphia. Oh, we yeah. just got to, you know, tap into them a little bit more. And I think even us doing it here opens up for other high schools and other big events to come down here. And they also can see like, oh, we can we can operate and run one of those, too. Exactly. What's the uh, c- uh, capacity here uh, at uh, CCP? I think like uh, CD capacity. I think they've got it at uh, if between fourteen hundred to eighteen hundred, I believe. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it's a it's and there's a way, other ways you can accommodate. It. Like I've seen a couple of events coming here; they'll just push one bleachers um, to one side, so you can have the the other side of the bleachers if you wanted to do it that way. Right. Um, you know, but I think you know at fourteen, eighteen hundred, it's, it's a very comfortable seating in there, um, and they're also just you know super accommodating. Like yesterday, we had a like a festival, food festival mm-hmm. kind of thing outside. Yeah, there was you a know. lot going on outside. So. Yeah, we had a couple of papa shots, a couple of other games. We want to just make sure that people can kind of flow how they want to. They don't just feel like they're stuck in a, in the bleachers. No, right. for sure. Uh, you said it at the at, at the opening. This is the 19th year of the Rumpf tourney. Any type of spoilers or any peak that you can give us inside for what year 20 is going to be like? Well, I think even so next month we're going to do our first Danny Rumpf art show. You know, what we're mm. looking at is, is is doing something a little bit unique, flipping – flipping the script and giving the creatives an opportunity to showcase, you know, their platforms. Cause yeah. you know, we can't do this with all the, all the camera guys. Oh, yeah. We've had some great art pieces. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's another chance to be able to showcase the storytelling that we do. Like there's a lot of hidden pieces inside the uniforms. It's all the mm-hmm. old winners, um, our kind of mottos. It's got the, you know, the, the, um, the coordinates, the, the rump center where Danny passed away at, you know, oh. where we all kind of grew up. So there's a lot of like little hidden things inside of there right. that tell a story. So Very in- intentional. yeah, it's a lot of intentionality in like everything that we do and, and how many stars are on things. If it's 19 stars, the 11 star, maybe colored Danny's number was 11. So we try to make sure that we always keep, you know, what we say the main thing, the main thing. Mm-hmm. And that's really like telling his story, telling his legacy, all of us as a friend group, being able to still do something together. It's hard to do something for a couple of years, let alone 19. Right. <laughs> um, but as we kind of project into year 20, you know, there's other little elements like that that we want to just build on that storytelling, get to the guys that have, you know, really helped us get here. Yeah. Um, and then look at 20 and then look at 21. He was 21 when he passed away. You know, to be able to do something for as long as he was, you know, living is our right. next big milestone mm-hmm. to be like, like, man, like that's that's something that we're going to take a lot of pride in. That's excellent. Any aspirations to grow the rump past you know, a four or five thousand seat venue, and maybe approach a Wells Fargo or something like that. Even if it's just for the finale of it or whatever like that, and and really, uh, you know, try to blow it out maybe a little bit more as far as capacity goes. Nah, I, don't, I think like so. LaSalle, like we we've been fortunate. Every gym we've ever touched, we max capacity, Absolutely. right? Like yeah, every time, <laughs> whether it's four to five thousand people. You know, LaSalle holds, holds a ton of people over the there. additional 4,000 on the baseline. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the staff and media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, Arcadia, you know, we've had a, a really great run of some, mo- yeah. of some great moments. But I think, like, our thing is the moments, you know, being able to make sure that the atmosphere is right. Once you get to the t- too big, you lose a little bit of the atmosphere. So, like, making sure that we still keep it, you know, really simple, you know, keep it about – you know, making sure the fans get to feel that trash talk, get to feel the energy. Right. Like, the energy makes a lot yeah, of difference. Yeah, like, yeah. you go to some of those gyms are just too – they're spaced out too much where it's like, this is summer basketball. It's meant to feel a certain way. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You got anything else, Matthew? Uh, no, listen, I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. Y'all, We're proud y'all of you. Have, y'all have killed this. Y'all have smoked this. I started coming to the rump in 10, 2010. Because remember, I was trucking. That was when I came home. Mm-hmm. I came 2000. I was chasing after this little, you know. And <laughs> it's a little yeah. Yeah, a little yeah. And she's like, yeah, me and my girls going to the rump. I'm like, the rump? I'm, I thought it was a, a, a club. You know what I'm saying? She's like, yeah, the rump tournament. I'm like, oh, all right, yeah. I'm, I, this ass G's. It's amazing. What the hell was going on up there? And I, I came to the first rump that I went to in 2010. And I mean, like. It was just seeing North Philly yelling at South Philly, seeing South Philly arguing with these guys, seeing, I want to say that was the, I think our King Warwick was in that one. Seeing, I was like, oh, shit, that's both from uh, Syracuse. And it's just like seeing that where it's like you got the NBA players mixing with dudes from 25th Street, and they're like going at it. And I came back the next year, and then I started realizing that was when Twitter and yeah. Instagram was blowing up. Like, yeah. oh, there go AO, there go Kindle, there go hey, this person, that person, that person. <sighs> And then I remember, uh, I want to say it was either 13 or 14 was the James Harden year. Four, 13, four, one of them 
whenever James Harden was there. Yeah, yeah. And that was when uh, Malik Wayne's was going at it with him. Yep, yep. And I mean, like, I was like, and that was my first time sitting right front, <laughs> front row. And I was just like, I've made it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I bored Lee, who's now my wife. She's my girl. She was just like, hey, who you know to get to? Man? I was, I'm connected. connected you know? <laughs> but after that, I was just like, yeah, I, I come to the rooms every year. So it's like to see it get to this place of seeing like kids where like, I remember when he was like seven and he's an adult now, oh, yeah. you know, like seeing that and seeing what it's become as far as the media, like he said, the media blowouts, what y'all have done as far as the, the integration of all the different things. And then seeing that y'all volunt- having kids as volunt- like that's like, I respect it. Bro. Yeah. We, we super respect and, uh, and admire the entire community around the rump because it's not just about you know you and the Sharifs as as founders and stuff like that it's a very all-inclusive uh event and it's authentically Philadelphia and we don't have many authentic Philadelphia experiences left and this one is at the top of the list seeing y'all show love to each other like you said with Raheem with all these different people who do things and again you know you you we call yo what's up yeah no let's do this do this like whoop whoop so I, I can't do nothing but tip my head on and say thanks, bro. I appreciate you, and that's dope. No, I appreciate no, it. Real. I know I know the, the other thing to it is, like, Miss Janet, who runs registration, been mm-hmm. there the whole time, right? Miss Danny's mom is out there selling pizzas right, right. now. Right. You know, <laughs> her, her friend group has been there since year one. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think also, you know, the Marcus and Markeith Morrises, who've been over a decade with us, mm-hmm. have also made sure that, like, this is part of their summer routine. Like, right. they want to be a part of what's right. going on, and they want to bring friends. And I think that's always been really important. The Hakeem Warks, even, like, Mustafa Shakur played the first couple mm-hmm. years. You know, the Sean Singles, like, like all those guys that have helped pave the way. So it, the love is always kind of mutual. So, like, anybody that walks in here from a, a fan, a media company, anybody building something, we try to, like, how do we amplify, how do we support each other Absolutely. and just show love because you don't need to come in here. Like, right. people got stuff going on. So, you know, we just try to make sure that we just lead with a lot of love. No, nah, that's real, girl. Definitely, though. CRPE Sports, we outside, not inside. We got the man here, Mr. Mike Morak. Shout out to the entire Danny Rumpf community, all of the support staff, all of the volunteers, all of the fans, everybody that makes this event what it is and makes it so special each and every August here in the city of Philadelphia. All right, guys. Appreciate it. We out. Peace. TRP Sports, we are in the field today. Uh, we, we are outside, not inside, man. We got somebody on the show that is a friend to the show, a listener to the show, yeah. uh, a, a brother, a supporter of ours, somebody that's going to come back uh, for a more long-form interview about him. But yeah, today, today it's all about the Danny Rumpf Classic. We are here, 2024 Community College of Philadelphia. Uh, we just had the uh, founder, Mike Morak, in here, um, you know, just – giving them kudos on their impressive media coverage of uh, of this event. It's like, it's, it's blowing me away. What, just specific to the media part about it, what did you think about just seeing everything in real time yesterday, uh, day one? Man, listen, I was sitting, I was sitting down and, and got a picture. I got a nice picture. I sent it out. I sent a picture out, too. Like, yo, I'm cute, right? Yeah. <laughs> they got angles. <laughs> it was a good job. Hey, babe, how look? You cute. Yeah, I know. Thank you. The funniest part is I'm scrolling through the pictures. I see you. I see Munch. I see Pascal. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Where I'm am I at? I got to be. He right there, right? So it was, uh, yeah. It's lit. Like, they, how they got everything. Like, it, it's on a um, clockwork. It's, yeah. it's doing real good. Real, real good. Uh, that, that voice that y'all hear, a familiar voice, uh, when he sings, is much more uh, higher, higher yeah. octave. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the falsetto king, man. Uh, Jermaine Dolly, what attracted you, you know, to the rump and makes it something that is a part of your summer ritual here in Philly every August? BBLs and basketball. <laughs> My man. BBLs and basketball. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's like really good basketball. If you, if you want some really, really good basketball, like, competition, I'm like a basketball fanatic. I love basketball. Whether, no matter what level it is, hood basketball, college basketball, high school basketball, and especially like like you know just see like all that league wise, everybody come in one room. You got the hood playing. You can, you you got somebody from Twenty Fifth Street can play somebody like the James Harden, yeah. and they going at it, and, and it's like real dope. Like you see like people like we stuff. Me and Matt was talking about it yesterday. Like Bull was jumping out the gym, like and, and like just and it's right there. You know what I mean? Like especially like you part of media, you got good seats. <laughs> because I remember, I remember I was I was up top. Yeah, I remember that. I remember it was up top. And so we all started up top. <laughs> we started up top. We all started and now up we, top. Got, we got a name tag. We now made we, it the press row. Now we, we, made the press now row. we making seats. <laughs> yeah, no, bring another chip, my man. Oh. Hey, 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 move him. Move him. I walked in today and made seats. 
Yeah. What are you doing? I'm yeah. like, I'm Mike, man. Yeah. 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 Right, right. yeah. So, like, it, it, it's that. But, like, just to see that up close and personal, like, you, you see them guys on TV and you get a chance to see them in front of your face. It just, it's just a good environment. A good environment. See y'all. We just we laughing, bitch. Bro, we had a ball yesterday. We had a ball. Like, yeah. so it's just it's just those times. Like, it is no, non violent. You got to worry about, like, turning around, making sure, like, nobody behind you and nothing like that. Or, like, acting crazy. It's a good time. It's a good time here. So, can yeah. I ask a question? Who was you most impressed by in day one? Oh, um, I love Sam. Sam Session. I love Sam Session. He can ball. He can ball. Like he like that. He's still, his poise is like he, he's really good. Um, Rec Six, the team as a whole, that the energy is th- that they bring to the mm-hmm. to the tournament is like really really good. Twins just bring everybody out. Like, yeah, like, yeah. So it, it, when they come in, it's like okay, like everybody just here and it's like it's just fun just mm-hmm. seeing them walk in mm-hmm. thirty deep. 80. And then, 80, 80. <laughs> it was crazy. It's Rex has come two twenty. Yeah. So yeah. you know, it just though. Uh, who who really played? Oh, um, Colin. Colin. Yo, yo. Colin killed Colin. everybody. Colin was on some shit yesterday. Great White Hope. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was crazy. It was crazy. So, yeah. He got to a point where he just couldn't miss. Like yeah. he he was just easily getting to his spot. Yeah. He was he picking a defensive. Yeah, like yeah. All right, now. Yeah. Right, now. He's like, oh yeah, oh, y'all think I'm a system yeah, player? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, but no, nah, the, the the games, the competition, the camaraderie, um, you know, it, it's one of the true feel-good weekends in yeah. Philadelphia. Like, yeah. something that I think people universally, you know, look forward to. They're going to be tipping off short here. I see just people just pouring in, pouring yeah. in, pouring in, uh, because, you know, they want to they wanna get their spots, man. They want to make sure they're not in the nosebleeds. Yeah, never lie. Never lie. I've been there. I bet I'm in nosebleeds, middle section, front row. Now I'm in the <laughs> celebrity row. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Yeah, listen. Your first time getting bored into the room, you, you, oh, you, yo, you feel. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm telling you a very funny story. So my first year, I start popping, right? My first year, I start popping. I'm like, so everywhere else, I'm like, uh, like, 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 Artists will come call me, like, yo, I'm down there, man, say, like, PJ Morton will come call me, like, hey, all, all these, like, big, I, I know people that play in Jay-Z and Beyonce band, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in your city, you got tickets to do it, so I'm like, I'm lit my first year, right, so I'm like, my, I'm popping, cool, so then I'm like, all right, Danny, rough time, come, right, man, I walked in, I'm thinking I'm supposed to get a seat, they was like, no, I was like, what, I was like, I need a seat over there. It was like, so, but then I saw people that was over there that was, I didn't think was worthy of the seats yeah. over there. So I mean, I'm hot. Now I'm hot. I talked to my man. I said, next year, I'm getting, I'm doing, I'm getting, I'm getting number ones. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to get it. I'm going I'm to I'm get that seat over there. Yeah. Ever since then, I, I worked hard that year. I got three <laughs> number ones. Yeah. I got like, like over 40 something million views on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so now, hey guys, I need that front row seat over yeah, there. Yeah, I need yeah. that now. <laughs> now, I, I, my name tag is on the back. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm lit. Th- thank you, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I greatly appreciate you. I haven't gotten that. I got a seat. No name. <laughs> Like, like, you got to check. Don't get cute. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The funniest part is I used to not want to sit over there, Damn. like on some anti-establishment. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I used to sit right on the side behind the scoring yeah. table. Yeah. But what they're having is they started putting another row oh, there. Yeah. It's like, wait, I'm not. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, I'm, I'm, hold on, I'm, I'm an AA row now. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I done went from course side yeah. to AA yeah. row. Like, AA <laughs> as a row. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm sitting on that course side. See, I'm like, cool. But then they added that extra row. I Yo. said, oh. No. And, and, and the one year I, I was like, you know, it's cool because you was with me. I was yeah. like, it's cool, no big deal. They brought Chris and Neef in, and they was right in front of her. And I was, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I had enough of this. <laughs> BBL's never, I got to get the fuck off. Oh. Nice town in front yeah. of you now. Like, what the hell is going on? Here? Yeah, no, that was annoying. Do you have any prediction on who might win the tourney and who might be MVP this year? Colin, so far. And now, no, foe, they don't play Eight eye looks good. Yeah, that, that's that's um, because they that seems good. They uh, yeah. all play together. They play yeah. So I mean, like twins, they always since they the lost last is, night, they're not gonna lose no yeah, more. The thing is, twins and them they they showed them yesterday with sweatpants on. Yeah. But it's like they're NBA veterans. Yes. So it's like we can show up in dungarees. <laughs> they all really, you know, when we get going, we get going. I like but AI. I think at eight eye has a good chemistry. Yeah, I like eight eye. Yeah, Ada, I think Ada, uh, so far, out of, you know, the, f- the four games we saw last night, I think Ada is the most well-coached team yeah. and the team that plays yeah. together right. the most. Okay. And then probably Rex might be Shout second. Out, ironically, to Scooter. That's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> we grinded Scooter up last yeah, night yeah, trying yeah. to fit. I'm like, how are, how are you born into <laughs> foe and you're coaching Ada? 
<laughs> Martin Kennedy said, I'm shaking your hand, bro. Yo. I'm shaking your hand, you traitor. All he needed was a cigar. Right? You see how much talent I got over there? <laughs> like, Scoot our back yeah, over here. Straight up. Uh, do you, what's your fondest memory of the rum tour? Um, Don't be cliche like everybody else. I'm not. I'll tell you right now, um, back, like I'll say about 15 years ago, um, there was a guy named Calvin Green. I used to date a sister. Okay. And so, Sounds personal. Yeah, very personal. <laughs> okay. And so, but like, I, she was always saying, like, my brother can play ball, my, my brother can play basketball. I'm like, all right, well, I'm from Southwest. So I'm like, I, I always saw like hood niggas play ball. Like, mm-hmm. so I didn't really know like, nobody that, like went, went to the league or nothing like that. <laughs> they were just some good hood It was niggas. great at Myers. Yeah, so, perfect at Myers. It was great I got at Myers. a good hood nigga basketball. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so, like, I'm like, okay, right. cool. Like, so, so I'm like, man. Mm, I, I, he not that good man. I saw that man play. He scored the, the easiest thirty points I've ever seen. I mean, he did the same move five times. I said, "Wait, this is different up here. Mm-hmm. This is a different type of league." And then the next year, like maybe like two years after that, Rodney Green from around the way. Mm-hmm. Rodney Green went up there. I was like, so Rodney was the one that we like in Southwest. Like he going to the, that's our that's our savior. Mm-hmm. He, he out of here. And so he came out there. He played. Well, he 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 went to go dunk the ball. His hand. I ain't know Rodney get up like that. His hand was at the top of the, the backboard, but I'm like right here looking like, hey, these niggas really like jumping high. Yeah. And so that was like, I was like, okay, this is a different type of, this is a different type of competition, different like, level, different level like, I, that I was never exposed to. But you only see it on TV. But mm-hmm. to see it like, like Marty kind of, the Marty, like Marty was like, he was there, like mm-hmm. like there, he's in the A. Mm-hmm. Um, John Salmons, he was here, yeah. like he was in the A, and he played. The, at the room, so. the thing I love the most about the room is seeing the players who are NBA players, NBA caliber, you know, NBA veterans a lot, yeah. and they're just here. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't even like Reggie Jackson was there yeah, yesterday. Yeah, he, he came in with foe. Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't even <laughs> pee. And it's just they they just around. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's definitely a dope. Real quick, uh, hood nigga ball story. Yes. You remember that era of life where everybody wore chuckers? For sure. One of our guys, he he had on Tim's and okay. a Dickie set. They started okay. arguing about ball. He's like, I'm gonna put my ball shit on right now. <laughs> they like, go put it on. He left and came back with shorts and chuckers. <laughs> and proceeded to score like 53. No, oh no, because he's got the foam sole. The other one's got the double sole. He's yeah. got the foam sole. Yeah. Cross the nigga over and, and put on <laughs> and went to work out there. That's some Southwest yeah, shit too. Straight Southwest <laughs> shit, dog. And, 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 and for me, I'm thinking like that's the oh, that's the pinnacle of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> like even at North, like, I'm not going to North. We're from North. Oh, you know, for she wants six even. That's my head. I'm not going up there. Go to Meyer. Fifty oh. even. Fifty even Kings. That's y'all tripping. Like yeah, I'm coming to Seventeenth and Lehigh for wings. But I, I was out of that. I don't, it ain't balling up there. Yeah, that's the funniest shit. But yeah, I've definitely seen a dude take butters off and put on chuckers. And go to town. Yeah, they they fooled us in Southwest. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 it was not no hoopers. That was prison ball. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. They was trying to keep the recidivism rate down by playing Hell basketball. Yeah, sure. Hell yeah, that's funny as shit. You got anything else, man? Man, I got nothing else, man. Like I said, this man here is going to come back for a full episode yeah. to talk about all the fantastic things that he's doing. Explosions and jubilees and everything. Yeah. Infest. Yeah. 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 Explosions. Yeah, yeah, I'm with all that. Yeah, I'm with all that. Complications. Yeah, let's get it. That's hilarious. TRP Sports, Jermaine Dolly. We out. What's good, people? It's your boy Chad, one half of the Realest Podcast ever, and I'm coming to you today with an exclusive offer only for TRP Nation. Shh, don't tell nobody from our advertising partner, my bookie, to kick off football season. My bookie is giving you a super aggressive, unprecedented deposit match up to 50% of whatever you put out up to a thousand dollars. That's right. That what does that mean? You put down two thousand dollars of your own money. My bookie's gonna match you, give you a thousand dollars of free money to be able to gamble with that's yours that you'll be able to access immediately as soon as you make your first deposit. Go right now, use our special offer, bit.ly slash join with TRPE. It's case sensitive, so make sure you capitalize the TRPE to get this legendary offer. And if that link is too hard to follow, go to mybookie.ag. And when you check out, just use my promo code TRPE to be able to claim your $1,000 on your 50% deposit match for football season. Brought to you by the good folks at TRPE and my bookie. TRPE Sports, we outside today, man. We uh, joined by very very familiar face. Y'all know this mug right here. He's been on uh, the, the podcast uh, more times than anybody in the history of the show. Going back to the early, early, early days when we was all the way up by the Chamonix Mall uh, d- d- doing doing uh, a whole bunch of nothing back in those days. Podcasting for podcasting for free hoagie trees. So far out here. <laughs> and he's back again today. Uh, Pastor Carl Day, welcome to the show, beloved. Oh man, it's always good to 
kick it with y'all guys, man. Where, where did all the energy go? I mean, no, it's good to kick it with y'all. You know what I mean? I, I know what you wanted me to say. Like, I could have said a lot of bad things about Matt just now, but I, w- I was trying to be pastorish. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's good to be with you guys. I, I, I uh, appreciate the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, professionalism. The, the, yes, 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 professionalism. What little bit there is, yes. <laughs> We are here today, uh, 2024 Rumpf Tournament, the 19th edition of the Rumpf. Uh, you are a mainstay here. You're VVVIP. Uh, you know, you got yeah, you the whole. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, nah, no, nah, Moody's kick, they kicking yeah. seats to make sure your seats are straight. What is it about uh, the Rumpf that attracts you to, be, you know, be able to come back year in and year out? I'm, I mean, I feel like the way that Mike runs the Rumpf, man, I think that, like, he separates himself from the pack. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, he you never know who's going to show up. Um, he's super consistent. I think he runs a tight ship. Um, and I just think that he does a lot of things in excellence. So, for me, like, it's always entertaining. It brings everybody from the city together. You don't see no, you know, riffraff. You don't see no nonsense. But people really come and they just enjoy themselves. So, like, for me, that's just been the experience time after time after time, year after year. Um, and that's why, like, Mike got my support. The Rump got my support. The Mission has my support because, you know, many black brothers, y'all know we got to be shot or, like, almost dying before we go to the hospital. So it's like, you know, um, this was a guy that was, like, in peak shape, yet, you know what I'm saying, still passed away at an early age and was athletic. So right. I think that, like, that right there should trigger us all to be like, look, I need to make sure I'm okay. You know, and get checked out regularly and do what I need to do to be on top of my health. So, again, just everything along with it, just, you know what I mean, it got me. I love love everything that the Rump represents. I feel like this is our Rucker Park. How long have you been attending the Rump? What is your earliest memory of the Rump tournament? I think I've been – I've probably been coming to the Rump probably for like 13 years. I know they've been around for like 18, 19. I want to say at least 13 years, you know what I'm saying, um – when it first started, like I was like in jail, so like <laughs> it's hard to come. To, yeah, man, you know, hard man, to come to man, you know, yeah, yeah, definitely hard to come. Matt was working at Kmart in Penrose, um, but yeah, I was Clover, yeah, Clover, Clover. You was in Sing Sing, you know. Clover. I'm saying I don't even want to say whatever, whatever case I was fighting, but he was working at Clover. Clover was much better than, than Joe. I'll tell you that much. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, but, hey, but 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 yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, nah, man. Like, nah, the rump, the rump just been consistent, man. So like, I I, I can just go through throughout years, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like the pride that every hood take in like getting their own team out Absolutely. here. You see the guys from South Philly. You see the guys. You, you see the guys from FOE. You see the guys from you know when Reggie Redden came in, like you know what I mean, and um. You know, Sant put a team together. It was just like, yo, like this this league literally brings the best of people out. And dudes like Harden and Jalen Brunson and, you know what I mean? Like, yo, you, you see a little bit of everybody come out for the rump, dog. Like, right. like that that's Philly basketball, man. I think this 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 league epitomizes what Philly basketball represents. And it makes the city get prideful in a good way. Especially because, like, the city's violent as all hell right now. So, to see everybody come out have a good time, like, that's everything. Matthew, what you got? Uh, do you do you have any predictions for who's going to take the championship this year? I'm gonna be real, man. I think I think Blue Magic look good, man. Blue Magic look good, but FOE to get Sam Sessions. That young boy might be the best young boy in the city. Sam He's Sessions. Very, very Sam cool. Sessions is nice. That young boy is nice, man. Like, and I told him that. Like, I think he might be the best youngin in the city. Um, you know, like probably like under twenty. Two or whatever, but um, but yeah, like for FOE to get him and then had the Morris twins and like yo, they got Dollar Bill, they got a couple other people, like they they got a tough squad, but I think Blue Magic with BA and all of them, like yeah. yo, like they they nice and they run and they play together, like yeah. Joe Ross got a crazy team together, man. But I mean, Rex Six always in the picture, mm-hmm. so like that's the crazy part about the league this year, like you know, you got three teams that. Literally all could vibe. Quite a green. If he come out and he play for Rec Six, like they right back in the driver's seat too. Because the boy Wally, like they they nice. Shout they, out to Quad. That's Penrose. Yeah, Penrose. He Penrose. Yeah. You, yo, Penrose got like a a, a a a a. They got like a bill of like everybody that's from there. Like the census. You know what I'm saying? Matt got it. He got it on his PDF. You gotta check. The, gotta, gotta check, check my Palm Pilot yeah, and man. see. I mean, it's only a town of 120 people, so he know everybody. Yeah, yeah, but no, but yeah, man. Is. But no, quite they tough. He nice. Yeah, he so right. so yeah, I think I think yeah. But I like Blue Magic right now. Like I really do. Like no 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 disrespect to Star though, because Star my guy. But I think I think 
Blue Magic, man, they got that continuity. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, I think Blue Magic might be the favorite right now. Yeah, I never, I never selected it. I got nothing else, man. Hey, Carl want to get back to his chair. Yeah, he got, he got the VVVIP seats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I dig it. Anything you want to, uh, you know, tell the uh, Cretans that actually watch this podcast uh, before you before you get out of here? I, I just want to say this. I think the rump is showing that we really could bring people together if ran properly. We could bring people together and still have fun. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, yo, we've been having fun this yeah, whole been time. Bidding the whole, bidding the whole time. And, sure. and guess what? Like, everybody a part of the bid just, like, been having fun in the midst of the bid. Like, right. you know what I mean? And again, a rain trench coat down there. You know? <laughs> Shout out to say. But, 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 yeah, man, it's like, yo, but, like, no, you look at those, 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 those crowds of people. We typically want to run from events that got, like, them crowds yeah, of people. Yeah. And it's like everybody here is just having a ball. So I hope that. We can take that, build that momentum, see Diddy get back in his bag, start hosting some big events in the city, bring people out so we can have fun. You know what I'm saying? You got to come out of retirement. Um, we you do know events. I mean? We do the prime live. No, no, no. We ain't talking about the we events. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about Chad. I'm talking about Chad hosting some nightlife events. You know what I mean? Everything ain't got to be the pod. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we want to get dressed and come and, you know, have a, a beverage or two. And, you know what I mean? But, like, no, I think we should be able to revive that. And then, like, you know, the Sixers get this 76 place thing and we bring nightlife back. You know, they go in on, on, on a club and support social yeah. life and entertainment downtown. Yeah. You know, we revitalize that. And we do what we got to do so that, you know, we can have fun again in the city, man. We can leave a game downtown and go back and walk up the old city. Oh, you know what man. What, what, a t- what a time. After the party. Like, this is what we grew up on, Chad. Like, yeah. you know, Matt was on the porch. But, like, yo, we grew up on I this. I wasn't. I was down there. <laughs> I wasn't. So, no, but in all seriousness, though, I think that this shows that, yo, like, we could bring our people out by the masses and have fun, yo. Like, let's have fun. That's it. That's a phenomenal message, man. Shout out to Mike Morak. Shout out to both of the Sharif. Shout out to the entire community that supports and, uh, you know, empowers the rough tournament that happened every single year. First week in August take, takes over Philadelphia. It's the most important thing. And the Monday finals is always on a thousand. Like, it's, it's always, you know, to the roof, man. So It's going to be insane. Also, I just wanted people to know, too. Shout out to my boy Mike also outside of just the rump because, you know, like a couple years ago I started this thing called Area 32, pulled Mike in on it. Mike started a basketball league for young black kids um, in North Philly, the 19132 zip code. That's why we call it Area 32. Um, I got Mike some support for it. Mike been holding down those black youth for the last two years. You know what I'm saying? Got a couple hundred of them coming out. Sharif, A.O., all these guys been, you know, running skills and drills, everything for free for these kids. So when you see my guy do the rump, just know that, like, this is uh, an amazing week, but Mike do this year round. I got to pay homage to my dog. You know what I'm saying? I don't pay homage to a lot of white folk, but Mike, he not really always white. But, like, yo, Mike is my dog, and Mike really care. Like, so, no, I'm stamping that. I want people to know. Like, yo, them kids 10 to, like, 16, they really – we re push those youngins to get there and take advantage of that at Crystal Ray High School. So, again, Mike really is a dog in this city. So, I just want to salute him on that. That's real. Shout out to Mike, man. Mike's not white, he's creme brulee. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, fine. Pastor Carl Day, TRPE Sports. You, this is a train wreck. We're out of here. TRP Esports, we're in the field today, man. We, we cutting up, yo. we having a good old time. We are here at the 19th annual uh daniel e rumpf tournament man the 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 rumpf cup as it's been coined uh you know earlier today man and uh you know we're uh who said dolly was drinking because they're all drinking this wine that they found <laughs> and they're drinking it out of rump cups and mike's like where did y'all find the wine and where did y'all find the cups <laughs> so it's become the rump the rump cup, cup. Yeah, that's, that's where it's come from yeah, so uh, we they don't turn this into a prom. They don't yeah. spike and punch. <laughs> All right. we, we're here amongst friends, man. We have a uh, friend to the show, a supporter of the show, uh, TRPE guy. alumni, our guy DG Dave Gold, chief of diversity for uh, Harris Blitzer Sports Entertainment, uh, New Jersey Devils, Philadelphia Seventy Sixers, and uh, Dude, I never say. It. <laughs> I mean, Harris Blitzer, uh, it took me three years to get that right. I refused to say it on camera until I got it right. I finally got it right. What's up, DG? What's going on, fellas? 
Uh, we're here at the Rumpf. You're here at the Rumpf. Um, why is it important for you on an executive level and just on a personal level of a you know former athlete, somebody that loves basketball, to be present at this particular tournament on this particular weekend? Yeah, I mean, from a personal level, like I grew, so I grew up in Germantown, so I grew up playing ball at Mallory. So, like, I never played with Danny, but, like, everybody who's part of this tournament, I know a lot of people have been talking about how it's like a family reunion. Like, it's, I, I'm surprised myself when I come here and I just walk through the gym and say what's up to everybody, you know? Like, right. so, it's like, it's, people talk about how small the city Philly feels, um, even though, you know, we're, whatever, fifth, sixth big, biggest city in the country. I feel like I don't feel that more than when I come to the run. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, whether it's, like Sammy and Shannon Givens, who I've known since I was probably like seven years old, basketball camp playing on the playground. Um, uh, Sharif Bray, uh, his dad used to coach me back in the day. I know Mike forever. Um, uh, it's, it's so many different connections here that um, not only is it just great for the city, and I think some of the best non-NBA basketball, non-high-level you know high level D1 college basketball in the country, um, but it's just great for the culture and just a, a real positive thing for the, for the city. So... Every year, like, I make it a point to, to be here, come enjoy, come back, see everybody, um, and enjoy some good basketball. This is one of those events where you don't realize how many people you know until you, until walk, you in. walk into this, and you're like, I forgot I knew all these people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That's a fair. Does, Tunnel walking this does, it, uh, does it ever get with the familiarity aspect of, you know, seeing all these different people that, you know, you've known, you know, basically the, the balance of, you know – some period of over the last 30 years, does it ever get overwhelming uh, to, you know, to be here and just, you know, just experiencing all these different people that, you know, you, you've seen and, uh, you know, dealt with in different pockets of life? No, I mean, I think it's the opposite. It's like, um, it's actually cool seeing people that you know from different walks of life all in the same place. Like you, um, like I always, I always say when, um, I always say when, um, uh, like, my wedding day was, like, the coolest day of my life because it's all these different people that you know that are all in, like, the same room. Right. Like, this is one of those few spaces where you kind of get the same type of mm-hmm. feel and, and environment. So I don't, say, I don't think of it as overwhelming. I just think it's a beautiful thing. And it's, it's actually amazing that it's been able to go on for this long. This is the 19th tournament, but I think it's 20th year, right, because we lost here with COVID. So, Technically, yes, right? but, yeah, but, 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 uh, but it's, it's a 19th 19, yeah. tournament. Yeah, but, but even still, like, to have something like this go on for 20 years, to keep growing, and, like, shout out to Mike for, for um, and everybody, you know, Sharif, Sharif, um, uh, Brandon, et cetera. <clears throat> um, it's just – it's amazing, and it's something – we don't have a lot of this type of thing in the city. It's also At cool – it's also cool when you – like, when I was growing up, the place to go was, um, like, the Sunny Hill League and, like, the Baker League, right? Mm-hmm. And that existed. You would hear stories from, like, my parents and, like, uncles and, like, old heads mm-hmm. about all yeah. the battles that they would see from back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, like, now that's what the rump is. You mm-hmm. know? And it's so dope to see that from, like, somebody that, like, a generation that you grew up with, right? right. Like, this is, like, our generation's Sunny Hill League. And, and it's, it's, it's legendary, you know what I mean? Like, this is – to the rump, you'll always remember Malik Wayne's going to James Hart. Yeah, you'll just yeah, always remember yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like my like my one of my favorite memories is going to uh, over at LaSalle and Shannon going to John Wall. Right. And like right. and that put like Shannon on the map for a lot mm-hmm. of people who didn't really know right. who Shannon was. Like it's it's um those are the type of stories that are gonna live forever, frankly. And um it's just really cool to be a part of that and um and for like our generation to have something that was created during our, you know, our our uh you know, our bring it. And and it's super dope to see like the expansion of the rump now with you know you see Rex uh, Rex at six playing um, in the Drew League and you know playing in one of the New York leagues and stuff like that where it's like this is like an authentically Philly thing that's now gotten so popular that other leagues you know around the country are tapping into it like yo y'all got an invite y'all wanna y'all wanna come run and you know it's it's putting even more uh, of a spotlight on the rump tournament. Yeah, and, and, and feel like we, we have a, you know, Philly's got an underdog mentality, right? Um, and uh, we always got a chip on our shoulder, but I also think it's nice that we're, we get our just due, you know? Um, uh, and I don't think Philly gets the respect that it deserves in the basketball world. Um, I mean, everybody talks about, you know, New York and um, North Jersey, and um, everybody knows the Drew League. Everybody knows, the, you know, um, ABL down in Atlanta. And, like, Rumpf is right up there with everybody else. So right. to see – Rumpf get that recognition um, uh, across the country and, and also the talent of Philly being shown 
on a broader level, I think, is, is, is amazing for the city. How different or similar is Philly basketball to the North Jersey, New York markets, South Florida has a lot of prominent ball players Chicago. like Chicago. Like how 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 similar or different is Philly basketball compared to some of these other scenes? Man, Phil, Philly's just like blue collar, man. Like it's it's gritty. I don't think there's any other city that's grittier than Philly when it comes to the sport and and you know the way you got to earn your stripes. Um, uh, and you know nobody. If you look at any any Philly Hooper that came up through the ranks, whether it be you know in college or, or in the league, like you know a Philly Hooper on the court because he got an edge to him. Like Kyle Lowry is probably a great example. That just first first came first one that came to mind. Just was right. on the team on the team again this year. Mm-hmm. But like Kyle's like Kyle was never the fastest player. He was never the strongest player. Definitely not the tallest player. But man, he'd be up in your yo. Shit, that's that's man. yo. You, that's a hell of an observation. Philly do have a lot of those guys where it's like not the biggest, not the strongest, not the fastest, but it's just like you don't really want to deal with him. Yeah, Grit. Aaron McKee was like, <clears throat> yeah, that ain't that crazy. There's yeah. a lot of those. Players. Marty Collins was like yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah. Marty yeah. Collins was exactly like that. Grit, hustle, and being cerebral. It uh, just gets buckets. Like, like it does. Like it almost for other people it almost doesn't make sense because you're like. All right, you're not like really breaking anybody down off the dribble like nah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're okay shooter, but like you just you're gonna get to your spots. You and, and it's also smart basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think that's also something that's underrated is you got some guys in um, in Philly that like came out of like trees. Like John Hartnett is a is a great example mm-hmm. where a lot of guys came up. I I never um, he never coached me, but <clears throat> a lot of guys, Sammy Shannon, Deontay Christmas, um, uh, came came out of that, and that's just like. They're like basketball gurus. Like Chuck Ellis now is is, is like that now. What's right? his name from South Philly? Um, it was on the Heat. Oh, uh, Sue Russell Butler. No, recently on the Heat. Wait, oh, Waiters. Wait, Deion Waiters. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. we all got it's a lot of players mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Greg Wright, who used to coach on the Park. Another example. Um, so it's that's 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 the mentality that I think helps define. Philly basketball, and you definitely see it on full display, you know, um, at the rough. Have you ever played in the rough? Nah, 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 nah. I, um, <clears throat> I played. I like played Sunny Hill League and stuff. But once I once I graduated college, I was I kind of hung them up. It was, you know, so hmm. it wasn't. Um, I would be like right on the tier of yeah, like. Yeah, I was about to say you don't seem old enough for the Sunny Hill. That was <laughs> Bo Kimball in there. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Sunny yeah. Hill League was. Um, uh, I played high school through like. Summers in, in college, but um, but I never played at rump. I was pro- I probably would have been like right on a tier of like whether I should be on the court in the rump for real, like Uncle Paulie in the, in the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 Uncle Dave, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to him. Uh, this is my last question. I don't know if Matt has anything else. Do you have a prediction on who might win, or even if maybe not who might win, who might end up in the final? You can never count FOE out just because they got twins and yeah. um, uh, and they got Sam, like like Carl was saying. Um, Rec Six is always going to be tough. Blue Magic is always going to be tough. Um, but just going back to that, what I was saying about that, like Philly mentality, the underdog mentality. I don't think you can ever count Rump Center out. Right. Like and and yeah. that's that's partly me speaking because I, I probably know the most people on that team. Um, so I got a little bit of a bias there. But, like, I would love to see them, you know, come and, and make some noise. Um, they don't have as big names uh, this year. But, you know, I think um, that would be dope to see them do something special. Yeah. I think 8 is another one that's, like, underrated. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm loving 8 right now. <laughs> Jamie always brings, like, a crazy team. Uh, they're, and they're, they, ha- they just have a lot of continuity amongst, like, the team. And they, they, the last game you can tell, you can tell the teams win. that are just, like, thrown together and then guys who yeah, – they, like, they play they, basketball yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. going to trump all the time. Yeah. Like Villanova and the Knicks. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no Nick stuff. <laughs> uh, DG man, as always, we definitely appreciate you, brother. Uh, closer to the season, we want to have you come back. You yeah. know, what I'm saying, talk. Uh, you know, talk, talk Sixers, talk HBSC, talk 76 place. We gotta cross our fingers for 76 place. We uh, we talked. Yeah, we talked to somebody from uh, from City Council who shall remain nameless, and they was like, yeah, like you know, the mayor hasn't given any opinion on it, so we can't. Vote on it. It's getting it's getting tricky. It's getting tricky. 
We'll see how things shake out. We will see. We're, we're working on it, though. We're working on it, though. We're working on it. He was expressed by me and not written. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Gotta fix my piano. Talking to these Negroes about the. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, but shout out to you, man. You always uh, always mess with us. You never hesitate. You always come through whenever we ask. No, we appreciate, appreciate you having me. Nah, real talk. Always. Thank you so much, DG, man. TRPE Sports, live at the Rump. We are out of here.